Is the line really dead? Or are we all just watching one of the strangest, boldest, most chaotic construction stories ever play out in real time? Because here's the thing. You look at that satellite image of the Saudi desert and you can't ignore it. A ruler straight scar carved clean through sand and rock. A 200 meter wide trench stretching from the Hejaz Mountains all the way to the Gulf of Aqaba. That is not a concept. That is not hype. That is something very real that has been dug into the earth. And right next to it, the first portion of what could become the biggest foundations humanity has ever attempted. Concrete has been poured, steel has been sunk, and if the people behind this project are to be believed, the next step is going vertical. The thing everyone said was impossible. The thing everyone laughed at. The thing everyone said would never, ever happen. Might actually be happening. Or might it? Because for every drone shot of progress, is winding to a halt. Saudi Arabia has asked consulting firms to conduct a strategic review of the line. There's another rumor swirling. Budget pressures, strategic reviews. Is this idea even realistic? That is absolutely insane. Consulting firms brought in to ask the unthinkable question. And whispers, unconfirmed but persistent, that the whole thing could be quietly scaled back or even canceled. And that's why 2026 matters so much. Because hype only gets you so far. At some point, progress has to be measured in meters of height, not megabytes of CGI. For a country that's tied so much of its future to this one idea. And for a leader who's staked his reputation on it. They say it can be done. They can't keep saying that. And we can't keep proving them wrong. This isn't just another mega project. This is make or break. So let's slow down, take a breath, and actually unpack this. What is the line? How far has it really gone? And is this insane idea even remotely realistic? In case you genuinely have been living under a rock, the line is the flagship project of Naom, a vast new region being built in the northwest of Saudi Arabia. And behind it all, is Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the man driving Vision 2030, a plan designed to drag the Saudi economy into a post-oil future by the end of this decade. At the heart of that vision sits the line, a city that's 200 meters wide, 500 meters tall, and 170 kilometers long, a city designed to house up to 9 million people, a city with no cars, no streets as we know them, and no traditional sprawl, just two mirrored walls slicing through the desert like something pulled straight out of science fiction. Those numbers are so ridiculous they almost stop meaning anything. So instead of trying to imagine it, let's ground this. Picture the Empire State Building. Now imagine something that completely dwarfs it in height. Then imagine that structure stretching on and on and on for the distance between London and Birmingham. That's the scale we're talking about here. And the first big problem with anything that ambitious is the ground it sits on. The line crosses mountains, deserts, and salty coastal plains. None of that screams ideal building site. Much of the land is made up of loosely compacted material, basically geological junk that's useless at carrying weight. The only way to build on it is to bypass it entirely and transfer the load down into solid bedrock. That's where piled raft foundations come in. Think of a massive concrete slab sitting at ground level, supported by forests of deep piles drilled down through rubbish soil and anchored into rock below. It's not glamorous, but it's essential. Without it, nothing else happens. And the scale here is genuinely staggering. Phase one alone has involved more than 16,000 piles, some drilled up to 70 meters deep, nearly 1,000 kilometers of drilling around 3.5 million cubic meters of concrete. On top of that, an eight meter thick concrete raft that will carry everything built above it. This isn't theoretical, this is happening. Automated factories are pumping out tens of thousands of rebar cages. GPS guided drilling rigs are boring holes with millimeter precision. Biodegradable fluids are being pumped in to stop the ground collapsing before concrete is poured. Then there's the water problem. Being so close to the Red Sea means highly saline groundwater, which is a nightmare for steel and concrete. Left untreated, it corrodes everything. So, the solution? The largest dewatering system ever created. 
hundreds of wells pumping up to 90,000 cubic meters of water per hour, filtering it, checking it, and dumping it back out to sea. This is not fake work. This is serious, industrial, eye-wateringly expensive engineering. And with foundations for phase one almost complete, the next big milestone is looming, going vertical. Now, normally, that means cores, those ugly concrete spines you see rising out of skyscraper sites. They're the backbone of tall buildings, housing lifts, stairs, and services. But the line doesn't have one core, it has thousands. Because here's the crucial thing people miss. The line isn't really a building, it's a framework, a vertical city grid. Imagine Manhattan's street layout, but folded up and stacked into the sky. Each core acts like a cross street. The horizontal decks act like avenues. And inside that grid, homes, schools, hospitals, shops, transport, everything that makes a city work. Phase one will see two rows of 500 meter tall towers linked by massive steel outrigger beams, supporting five primary decks. Just phase one alone involves nearly five million tons of steel. And usually by this stage, you'd expect to see steelwork and cladding racing up behind the cores, which is why 2026 is so important. If this thing is real, next year is when it should finally start looking real. But then we hit the next problem, concrete. At scale, concrete is brutally unforgiving. Pour it too slowly, it sets unevenly. Too fast, it separates. Too wet, it's weak. Too dry, it's full of voids. Consistency is everything, and consistency over years, across hundreds of kilometers, in a desert, is a logistical nightmare. So, Neom's solution is Oxagon, another mega project, a coastal industrial hub housing a gigantic desalination plant and a $190 million network of concrete factories capable of producing 20,000 cubic meters a day. There's just one issue, most of that doesn't exist yet. Construction only began in earnest in 2025. Water is still largely being delivered by tanker. Fine for early works, completely useless for a city. And there have been persistent reports that parts of this infrastructure, including the desalination plant, may have been quietly scrapped or delayed. That matters because inside, the line sits another promise. The Neom Stadium, suspended 350 meters in the air, Planned to host matches at the 2034 FIFA World Cup. Games people will buy tickets for. Games that assume this city is not just built, but functioning. And right now, it feels like a project desperately trying to build something, anything to prove momentum. Which brings us to phase one, that massive 170 kilometer trench. That's not for the whole city, not even close. Phase one is just 2.4 kilometers long, less than one and a half percent of the full line. Yes, it's still enormous, but it's also a psychological shock when you realize how small that slice actually is. The strategy officially is anchor assets, build spectacular headline grabbing features first, a man-made marina for the world's biggest cruise ships, the stadium, huge public spaces, the idea is that these attract investment, which then funds expansion. And that logic works in normal cities. But this isn't a normal city. This is a 170 kilometer long megastructure in the desert, a project that was supposed to tear up the rule book entirely. And now, suddenly it's playing by traditional development rules. That tension runs through everything about the line, because at its core, this is as much a symbol as it is a construction project a statement about what Saudi Arabia wants to become. And that symbolism flows straight up to the top. When power is that concentrated, hard questions become dangerous questions. Push back on a design tweak and you might be pushing back on the vision of a crown prince. And every small change at this scale means billions more in cost and years more in delay. Layered on top of that are serious allegations, forced relocations, human rights abuses, Claims Neom and the Saudi government strongly deny. And beyond official statements, there's a wall of silence. Journalists struggle to access the site. Sources are afraid to speak. And without transparency, even the basic fundamentals become harder to trust. 
History tells us this isn't unprecedented. We've seen showpiece cities before. Take Brasilia, built from scratch in the 1960s, designed to symbolize a modern, forward-looking nation. Planned around a radical shape, an aeroplane, it worked in some ways, it failed in others. It became iconic, but also deeply criticized. The line is chasing that same legacy, but through a cyberpunk lens, literally. Its aesthetics draw inspiration from science fiction like Snow Crash and films like Blade Runner. That mirror-clad exterior? That's not accidental. A real-world test of that idea already exists in Mariah, a concert hall wrapped in specially engineered mirrors that reflect over 90% of light and survive brutal desert conditions. But scaling that technology up to 170 kilometers? That's another question entirely. Then there's heat, and this is the one that makes a lot of engineers quietly wince. The line will not be air-conditioned outdoors. Inside buildings, fine. But on the decks and streets, you're in the desert, surrounded by concrete, steel, and glass. Heat island effect included. We're told the mirrors will reflect light. We're told the facade will be breathable, but details are thin. And at this scale, vague assurances don't inspire confidence. Transport is another big promise. No cars, high-speed rail, end-to-end -end in 20 minutes. Local trains every 1.5 kilometers. Light rail every 100 meters. Lifts and escalators stitching it all together. But physics doesn't care about marketing. Even the fastest trains under development couldn't realistically cover that distance that quickly once acceleration and deceleration are factored in. And a linear city means most journeys are longer, not shorter. Unlike circular or radial cities, like Apple Park, you only have two directions to go, left or right. So where does that leave us? Five years in, the line has done something remarkable. It's made the world talk about cities again. It's inspired kids, it's forced uncomfortable debates, and it's proved that parts of this madness can technically be built. But ambition alone doesn't finish projects. Money does. Time does. Trust does. According to reporting from the Financial Times, even some executives involved privately doubt the full vision is achievable. And with Vision 2030 looming, the clock is loud now. Maybe a fragment gets built. A spectacular slice. A destination for the wealthy and the curious. Maybe the rest stays forever. Coming soon. Or maybe, against all odds, this becomes the modern-day equivalent of the pyramids. Because if the line is completed as promised, it will be one of the greatest things ever built. Full stop. But right now, it stands on a knife edge between science fiction and science fact. And over the next year, we're finally going to find out which side it falls on. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into the world's most controversial mega project, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let us know in the comments, do you think the line will ever be finished? Or will it become the most ambitious abandoned project in history?